In this video, I'm going to discuss a beautiful and elegant way to prove this combinatorial identity. It says NC0 plus NC1 plus NC2 all the way up to NCN is equal to 2 to the power N. So the left side is the sum of all the binomial coefficients from NC0 all the way up to NCN. And on the right side, we have 2 to the power N and we have to prove this identity. So one straightforward way to do this is to simply use the binomial theorem. If we take the expression 1 plus x to the power n and we expand it using the binomial theorem, we get nc0 into 1 to the power n into x to the power 0, which we can just write as nc0. And then we have nc1 into 1 to the power n minus 1 into x. So we just get nc1 times x. And now we can just keep going nc2 x square, nc3 x cubed. And this goes up all the way to ncn x to the power n. And now all we need to do is to substitute x equal to 1 into this expanded equality. And what we get on the left side, if we substitute x equal to 1, is 2 to the power n. So 2 to the power on the left side and on the right side, all these terms, this becomes 1, x square becomes 1, x cube becomes 1, x to the power n becomes 1 and so on. And so on the right side, we simply get nc0 plus nc1 plus nc2 all the way up to NCN. So this proves that the sum of the binomial coefficients is equal to 2 to the power n. But what I'm really interested in doing here is to find a more logical, a more elegant, a more beautiful way to prove the same combinatorial identity. So to do that, let's take a specific scenario and let's take a specific value of n. So let's say that n is equal to 5 and let's assume that we have 5 different objects. Let's say 5 different people. So let me draw them out. So let's say that these five people are Adam, Bob, Carol, Dan, and Eve. So what do the binomial coefficients 5c0, 5c1, 5c2, up to 5c5, what do these coefficients mean in the context of these five people? And what does the sum of those coefficients mean? So if we take 5c0, that would mean the number of ways of selecting zero people out of five, or the number of subsets with zero people. So that would simply be one in this case, because there's just one subset which has zero people which is the empty set now what does 5c1 mean so 5c1 means the number of subsets with one people so for example if you take the subset a just adam out of the five people or if you take just the subset d which is dan all of these are subsets of size one and there are five such subsets if you take 5c2 that would mean the number of subsets of size 2 so for example adam and bob would be one such subset dan and eve would be another such subset and so on and you can verify that 5c2 this is equal to 10 and similarly you can see that 5c3 which is the number of subsets of three people like abc bcd ade uh, this is 5c3 and this is equal to 10 again and then 5c4 is the number of subsets of size 4 or 4 people so this is equal to 5 and then 5c5 is the number of subsets of 5 people which is just the whole set of all the 5 people and this number is simply equal to 1. So now if you add all these values if you add all these binomial coefficients what are you really getting? So you are getting the number of subsets of any possible size that can be formed from this group of 5 people people and you can check that this sum is equal to 32 which is 2 to the power 5. So the number of subsets of any possible size that can be formed out of this set of five people is 32. And that is what the left side of the binomial identity is really counting. If you have n objects, how many possible subsets of any size can you form from those n objects? That is the sum on the left side. Now, why should it be equal to 2 to the power n? In this case, why are we getting the value 32 or 2 to the power 5? So for that, now comes the crux of the argument. So to understand why, we once again draw these five people and now the logic that we will apply is that to create a subset and therefore to count the number of subsets that can be formed from this set of five people we will make a decision about every possible person in this group and the decision we will make is whether to include that person in our subset or not for example uh, these people are let's name them again Adam, Bob, Carol, Dan, and Eve. So let's say that I I am creating my subset and I say that I will select Adam and I will select Dan, but I will not select Bob, Carol,
Angel and Eve. So this particular combination of ticks and crosses gives me the subset A comma D or Adam comma Dan. Now similarly I might say I will select Bob and I will select Dan and I will select Eve but I will not select Adam and Carol and this possible combination of ticks and crosses gives me the subset B, D and E and therefore you can see that every possible subset is actually just a sequence of ticks and crosses. You are making a decision on every person whether to include that person in the subset or not. So on every possible person you are making one of two possible decisions whether to include that person and put a tick or whether to not include that person and put a cross. So there are two decisions you can take with respect to Adam include or not include. There are two decisions you can take with respect to Bob. There are two decisions you can take with respect to Carol, two with respect to Dan and two with respect to Eve. And therefore, the total number of decisions you can take, the number of all such combinations of ticks and crosses is simply using the fundamental principle of counting. It's simply two times two times two times two times two. So that is two to the power five or 32. And now you can see that this argument is easily generalizable. The right side of the binomial identity, which is 2 to the power n, we are getting simply by saying that for each one of the n possible object, we have to make one of two possible decisions, whether to include or whether to exclude. So two possible decisions per object and there are n such objects. So you multiply 2 times 2 times 2 n times and you get 2 to the power n. So what's really happening in this binomial identity is that we are counting the same thing in two different ways. On the left side, we are basically taking these binomial coefficients and adding them. Each binomial coefficient represents the number of subsets of a certain size. We are adding all of those binomial coefficients to get the total number of subsets of any possible size. And on the right side, we are counting the same number of subsets, but in a different way. And that is how we get this equality. So I love this argument. It's very elegant. It's beautiful. And this is why I love combinatorics as a topic. I hope you enjoyed it too.